another splatter Ill when I gather my thoughts on production Feel every beat like eternal seduction Reluctant to leave with so much corruption The rap game, all fame, no rings All claim to be the next Alright, what's up guys? So today, let's talk about LPVOs In every rap post, my is not the norm The will I'm uh, one of the things I get asked quite often is, hey John, do you like LPVOs or why do you like an LPVO over a red dot? And, and really quick, I like both. I like red dots, I like LPVOs. I think they both have their purposes, they both have their jobs. You can use them interchangeably to an extent, but I prefer an LPVO if I'm going to start doing things a little further out or if I plan to shoot a little further out. Uh, mainly because I can see better, right? I can PID better. Um, I can do a lot more on, on the precise things uh, versus red dot on steel. And then I'm like, hit, bitch, yeah, but it was on the edge or it was on low or it wasn't effective zones where I can see and uh, shoot effective zones with an LPVO. Now, sidebar also, John, why don't, or why do you rather an LPVO over a magnifier? And it's because it is like purpose built. It's not just magnifying. It has an etched reticle. It's meant for precision. It's got precision adjustments. It gives me more precision. So I prefer an LPVO over a uh, flip up or flip forward or flip center uh, magnifier because of certain things like that. Also, it's just one thing I have to zero versus zeroing two things. Um, and and we'll talk about magnifiers in a different video, but. Either way, I prefer an LPVO over a magnifier, even with the weight. So let's talk about my main three things when it comes to LPVOs. Uh, when, when I choose an LPVO or if I'm, I'm evaluating an LPVO, the, the main three things I look for um, are a really good eye box, right? A really good eye box that's forgiving. And, and what I mean by that is, is what is the distance between my eye and the back of the scope right, that, that ocular lens, how far are they and how far can I get in and out without huge amounts of scope shadow. Now scope shadow, guys, for those that don't know, is what looks like, uh, what, what forces your reticle or your optic to look smaller because you're too far away or look off skew, like kind of has like some shadowing on one side or, or what looks like a black zone kind of like when the moon reaches a certain point and gets a shadow on it and then it forces the moon to look kind of like ovally or like a, a like a banana or like anything like that those kind of scope shadows i'm trying to avoid but how forgiving is that optic if my eye is not perfectly placed there um and and not only that but how far can my eye be so i can actually get some really good upright shooting and it's not for me it's not meant for me just to lay down and and shoot from the prone so there's a few things there that, that I, I look for in an eye box. I, I prefer the biggest one I can have and the most forgiving one. So if I went all the way to the edge on one side, it doesn't just disappear. Uh, my optic and my reticle don't just disappear. It gives me some good view still, even at a slight angle. So if I get into an awkward position or I'm shooting from an awkward place, I can actually do so. Because um, Sometimes you'll find that with an LPVO that you just can't. And we'll talk about that with the different ones that I've used. Um, the next thing is I, I want it to be bright, right? I want the reticle to be illuminated and I want it to be bright. And not just like daylight bright like they advertise, which I think is stupid because everybody's daylight brightness is different uh, per where you are in the, in the country or world. Um, I want like Florida bright. <laughs> and, and what I mean by that, I want it to be so bright that on our sunny days, I can see it. All right, I, can, I can up the illumination, get some good view of what it is that I need. Now, I don't, I don't prefer to have the entire reticle illuminated. I prefer the center to be illuminated, but uh, to each their own on that kind of thing. And, and like I said, I want it to be bright. I want it to be as bright as my aim points when I, I dial them up. Now this comes down to uh, also battery life and and battery life is going to change per the lpvo and per the brightness that they get and that's because to get them that bright and to keep glass clarity they're not using a filter notch so or i'm sorry a notch filter so because of that you're you're kind of losing a lot of battery life for that brightness but it's kind of worth it because if your optic goes 
dead, let's say no brightness, you still have an etched reticle, so whatever. And that gets us into number three. What I like, uh, the third, or the third most thing that I look for in an LPVO is a good reticle. Now, some people would be like, whatever, it's a reticle, bro. You're shooting it close and to mid distances. But I still wanna know, like if I shoot this thing out to 500 yards, which I do on short guns still, I wanna be able to know my holds. I want something that gives me some good holds, not an exact BDC, because I find that BDCs based on a specific barrel length and a specific ammunition are, are kind of gimmicky, uh, mainly because they just don't work as well as people would say or use them for. But I want mills, right? I want actual mill um, adjustments or mill marks on my reticle so I can judge how far. And then I want some that go to the sides too, right? I don't mind a little Christmas tree. I prefer the Tremor 3 reticle over most of them, but the H59 or any of the Horus uh, reticles in general, those all work really, really well. Um, also, some of the new ones and, and variations in those for lower variable powered optics is pretty awesome. So I, I prefer the uh, the reticle to be usable for distances as well as up close. And, and what that means is like when I turn on illumination and it's at one power, I just want a nice little dot. Right? I don't want any kind of like uh, horseshoe shapes or any kind of triangles or deltas. I, I rather just a good old dot in the center and when I turn on illumination and if I magnify it, then I want a nice reticle for me to work with at magnification. So just my personal preference on that, but that's what I look for. Secondary or, or, or the last few things that I'll look for um, every once in a while because they're kind of like whatever uh, to me, but uh, glass clarity is, it, well, that one's a little bit more than whatever. It's pretty important. I want my glass clarity to be pretty good because I want it to trans, transmit light through there really well so I can use it under night vision. And lastly, weight. Weight's kind of like the last thing I think about. It's not really that important to me, um, mainly because I work out, so I don't have to worry about it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I, I do it because I, I, weight is a thing. It is a thing that some people have to worry about depending on their rifle and how long they have to hold that rifle. So I get it, but it's an LPVO. You're gonna be trading red dot type weight for an LPVO based weight, which is completely different. It's something you're just gonna have to deal with. It, it is what it is for that much glass, that much magnification until they can put a, a T1 style optic on, an, on a scope and have magnification for that thing somehow and do that shit. I'm going to keep going with LPVOs that are big and they're probably going to be heavy because I like more magnification. So let's start going down the kind of the list of, of different LPVOs that I've used over the years. And I've, I've been kind of playing with LPVOs for about four years, so not, not a crazy amount of time, but as long as they've been coming out with like a, a one power or a one one or one two power, I've been using them. And I find that they are super useful in various situations and um, in CQB or in close close actual proximity to targets, I'm still able to use it as long as it has a good reticle and it has a good dot, like brightness, and um, an eye box. So that's probably why I like all three of those the most. Uh, but there are some that I've found that are shit. They're, they're, just, they're just not good. Uh, and, and they could be good for somebody that just has to deal with like a range gun and have fun with it. But for work, nah, I, I don't approve of it. Um, and that's my personal preference and my personal opinion based on the sample sizes I have. So do what you want to do. So starting out, uh, Vortex, right? So Vortex is one of those companies that at first was like, eh, I don't know about you, but over the years they have really grown into a really good company that has some, some good offerings. Also some low budget offerings that I'd say no to, but some really good high end offerings that, that really stick there with all the big guys. So uh, the Vortex Strike Eagle is one that I started out with uh, trying out because I was curious about LPVOs and I was like, let me let me dip my foot in just a little bit. And it was like a $300 optic. So nothing crazy, nothing that was drastic for me to spend my money on. But it was a one to six and immediately after using it for a, a few, I think it was about four or five weeks, uh, I was done with it. It was, it was not good enough. It had really black, bad <laughs> eye relief, uh, and and what I say is really bad is just like it, it wasn't as forgiving as I would want, 
It also had a reticle brightness that was crap. It was not daylight bright. It also had a, an okay reticle. It would be usable reticle, but it, it was a, a straight up no-go in my life. Uh, the glass clarity was like brownish. It was kind of crappy. And, and for me, the weight was whatever. It was pretty, pretty normal weight for an LPVO. But overall, it was a fucking no-go for me. That's, that's just my opinion. Uh, but take it with a grain of salt or take it with, with how you want to. Uh, or how you want it. The next one uh, that we're going to go down, because I'm just going to go through the the categories, not in order of how I played with them, but, I'm um, sorry, companies, not categories. But the next one was uh, the Gen 2, for, uh, the Razer from Vortex, uh, the Gen 2E, and uh, or Echo, Echo. The 1 to 6 from them was fantastic. It still is fantastic. I still uh, use it. So I, I still utilize this, this optic, I still love it. Um, it sits on one of my spare rifles, but it does a really good job. And eventually it'll make it back to one of my normal rotations, uh, but got moved over because I got the one to 10, which is what I'm gonna talk about next. But it's eye box is fantastic. It's illumination is fantastic. It's actual reticle isn't horrible. It's doable, it's, it's very usable. Um, and not only that, but I mean, weight-wise and glass-wise, or glass-wise it's great. Weight-wise, it's like, it's LPVO weight. It's what I expect, so nothing nothing too hurtful there. And it works well for what I need to use it for. So I'm, I'm very happy with the 1 to 6, and the majority of people out there would be happy with the 1 to 6. It is super good in close quarters or in CQB distances. It still works really, really well for one power. Now. Let's, let's sidebar that for a second. Let's talk about LPVOs and, and, and CQB distances and that true one power that people are always hunting for. It's not that they don't make one. They definitely have a, a, a few of these, right? Like the two Razors, the, the Mark VI, the Leupold have a true one power and so, so do actually all the Night Forces also. They all have a true one power. The problem is most people don't take the time to go ahead and adjust their diopter setting, which is the the setting that's closest to your eyeball, that diopter is gonna be really important in setting your specific one power because all of our eyes are completely different. So because my eyes, your eyes, the guy next to you's eyes are gonna be completely different, we can't just use the same optic and expect the same results. It's similar to or, or can be related to your prescription. So if you grab your buddy's glasses that has a prescription and depending on what it is and how, how deep or how, how horrible they are, um, you may put them on and see like a fishbowl or you may see magnified or you may see it minimize things or look funny. You may see different things that may just be blurry, but that means it's just not set for your eyes. Same thing with these things. You just need to set that diopter to your eyes. And, and once you set it to your eyes in the proper distance and the proper uh, actual prescription, then you're gonna see a one power or as close to one power as possible. Now, that doesn't mean it works for everybody, right? Because some people's eyes just suck dick and you're gonna have to deal with it. But if your eyes are decent or, or you still have young eyes that aren't too fucked up, then uh, you, you may just need to adjust your diopter and get a better one power out of it. Um, I suggest uh, setting it to something like at 10, 15 yards away and setting that, that diopter setting so that you're not dealing with something funny. You could also just look up into the sky, not at the sun, and, and set your diopter by clearing up your reticle and stuff like that. So you can get one power and then just try it at closer distances inside of a room or something. It is super, super easy to do, but a lot of people just don't think about it or they don't read the manual or they just don't understand what they just bought. So try it out before you trash your LPVO and say, ah, it's not good for fucking CQB because it's bullshit. Um, so uh, going down to the next one, right? We're gonna talk about the Vortex Gen 3 1 to 10. Now, this has become my new favorite. Why, right? So the 1 to 10 is almost the same form factor as the 1 to 6. It weighs exactly the same almost. Uh, or I think it's exactly the same, but it gives me 10 power now, and I can still use it in CQB distances, and it's got daylight bright, like or Florida bright reticle, and it has a good reticle inside of it 
that gives me some awesome holds and stuff like that. I am very happy with this thing, and um, I I'm glad Vortex keeps leading the 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 fight to getting us more magnification on a low variable powered optic. I'm super happy with them, and I think it's it's probably one of the best offerings out there for an LPVO. But you're going to pay for it, so you have to think about that as well. Um, but we're not going to talk about costs on things today. But mostly, like this covers all of those five things really, really well. It has a great forgiving eye box. It has great daylight brightness. It has a fantastic reticle. It has good glass, like really good glass that I wasn't expecting out of it. And then also has a really, really good weight because it literally weighs the same as this one to six where I'm getting four X more. So just my, my take on it, I like it a lot. So moving down, right, we get into Leupold and that's what I was holding a, a minute ago. So the Leupold Mark VI, fantastic optic. I had to borrow one from somebody uh, a while back, uh, one of my close friends, and I borrowed it for I think over a year. So I used it for over a year and, and didn't buy one and I thought it was the the cat's pajamas, man. It was awesome. Now, what's kind of weird was it was a 308 based reticle, so for 762 by 51. I didn't know that, and I was using its BDC for 556, and it worked. That's why I don't trust that whole, well, it's a 308 reticle versus a 556, and there may be more to it, I just don't care about it. I use the, the notches as needed per the mills that it gets. So that's that's how I look at these things is based on the the mills I'm happy because I can mill things I can I can definitely take care of stuff like that um, and also judge distances a lot easier so for me the the mark six has been a fantastic reticle it does a really good job the only thing that I noticed that I didn't like um, was or, or it, it works still but one of the things to think about is that because it has exposed turrets although they lock uh, it, they are still exposed, so you do have to set your zero stops for sure. Other than, uh, unlike the two vortexes that I like, they have capped red or capped turrets, which I prefer. So just something to think about on on the Mark VI. But it's not heavy. It it's a really good optic, and it's been around for a while, so you can get them used for really really inexpensive. And if you don't like the reticle that's in them, you can just send it back to Liverpool, pay the price to change the reticle, and then you get what you want. So. It's kind of cool in that retro or in that perspective but like I said it is one of my favorites it covers all of these the eye box is fantastic the the brightness is bright enough for Florida bright the reticle is really good depending on which one you get because uh, they do have the TMR reticle that's pretty decent it's a good size it does everything I need but then they have even better reticles uh, and then we get into the glass it's loop old glass it's usually pretty good and out of Mark VI as they are, and then weight-wise, it's not very heavy, and it is a one to six. So, one of my favorite, favorite optics. It is awesome, and I may actually buy another one. But that's that's one of those really good optics that a lot of people don't think about, and uh, I don't hear a lot about, and I don't see a lot. But the Mark VI, fantastic, one to six. Then we go down even further, and we get into the Night Force offerings. Uh, some of the night forces that I played with was the NXS, the NX8, and the NX8 Attacker, and all of them work. They, they're pretty good, but there's some things I don't like about them, and I would have preferred for them at Night Force to have done certain things. Um, so first off, like the NXS, uh, let me grab it. The NXS is tiny, so it gives you a really good small optic for one to four and it has daylight brightness to an extent. Uh, it could be brighter and that's what I would prefer, but it has cap turrets, which is what I like. It also has really easy magnification and it comes with its little own, its own little screw in cat tail, just like the NX8s do. And its eye box is pretty forgiving. It's not horrible, it's not the best, but it's also not the worst at all. And, and for me personally, I find that it works really, really well. Downside, it's only 4X. So you're only getting 4X out of it, but it is, I would say it almost weighs less than uh, a magnifier and an EOTech, like, <laughs> or, or it's really close probably if I looked at the numbers. 
but it feels very light and uh, and depending on the type of mount you get for it you can get a really nice uh, setup with this night force but like I said you're, you're missing a few things the one thing that I dislike about it and I'll, I'll make sure uh, to pass these through so you guys can see it but on these reticles right some of them are just not there Right, so this reticle um, on the NXS is just an X, and that's it. And you have some stadia lines that give you some offset and stuff, but there's no hold lines. I, I like having those mill holds for me to to make sure that I know my holds and know exactly where they are, and I don't have to guesstimate. That's my preferred method, and the NXS doesn't give me that ability. Now there may be other offerings on the on the scope. Um, I'm sorry, on the reticles, but I'm not sure. But that's one of the things that it kind of doesn't it doesn't do it for me the reticle and um but everything else has been really good like i said um and i think the eye box like i said could be also better but it is a really small optic so you get what you get the next one let's talk about is the nx8 the nx8 is really sweet i like it <clears throat> It has a good eye box. It has a good uh, set of turrets where it caps the windage, but it leaves the the what we call it, the elevation one is free for you to play with. I kind of like that on there. Um, I didn't think I would at first, but it definitely grew on me. And my battery's dead. But it's uh it's one of those optics that you're like, man, I don't know about that. But once you start using it and you know that you set your zero stop to zero, so no matter what I move it to, so if I'm like, boop, you know, I go five mils high for whatever shot, I can always come back to my zero because I set my zero stop. So it's definitely something to make sure you do, obviously read the manuals to your optics. But the one thing that gets me on the NX-8 that just irks me horribly, because it's a one to eight, like it's got a lot of magnification it's a fantastic optic but at eight power and i'll try and put it through here so you guys can see it it is a six moa dot in the center that's horrible that means it covers up 12 inches at 200 yards that means it covers up six inches at 100 right that, that's that's just not that's not good i i would have why why didn't they just do a one moa dot in the center i don't know I don't know if it had to do with limitations, engineering, whatever it was, but it, it is it is one of those things that really, really kind of irked me about the NX-8. Other than that, it's barely bigger than the uh, NX-4, or I'm sorry, the NS, NXS, the one to four power that I just showed you guys, and it gives you way more capability. So just something, it's reticles decent, except for that center. That center on the on the reticle pisses me off so much. It's It's like a... I wish I knew somebody at Night Force. So, <laughs> the next one, uh, which has the same exact problem, is the NX-8 Attacker. It has a better reticle, and it's a little bit more beefy, it gets a little bit more light, um, but it just, the center is still a 6 moa god. It absolutely drives me nuts. So, they, they kind of dropped the ball, I find, that Night Force could have done so much better with the reticle choice. Other than that, both of those have really good everything else, um, and and I'm happy with them. I could I could use it, and it's not horrible. And um, one of my buddies actually did a DMR class with one, and shot out to 600, I think 650 meters with one. But that was when he started getting into the actual hold lines where they're smaller than that center point. So his zero, he had to get a really good zero and make sure he was spot on with it because that 6MOA dot covered up a lot of the target. So just something to think about when uh, when going through and, and picking a reticle out of your uh, your choices. And then the last one we'll talk about, which I don't have anymore, is a Trigicon AccuPower, and uh, it's a one to eight as well. One of the things that I noticed with the one to eight from, from AccuPower, I'm sorry, the, the Trigicon, I mean, it was, it, it had a pretty decent eye box wasn't horrible but it, it did it did suffer a little bit the the vortexes still have a better one the loophole has a better one by far um but what ended up happening or what what gave me the, the no on the AccuPower was the reticle so the reticle was was just not my favorite it, it, it didn't cover anything that i wanted to cover in the sense of 
the the needs I had and then also that center was huge so once again as as much as I really wanted to like it I did it and um and then although weight isn't that important to me it was heavy for what it was it could have been way lighter like the NX8 is way lighter for a 1 to 8 the I, I believe the two razors are actually lighter than the AccuPower as well. So just something to think about there when it comes to uh, if, if weight is important. The AccuPower is a beefy fellow. So that thing is, the thing's heavy. So guys, with, uh, with talking about LPVOs, I'm sure I didn't cover a few things that people want me to cover. And like I said, put it, or, or like I usually mentioned, put it in the comments. I'll try and cover it um, either in a video or I'll answer it right there for you. Um, and I'm sure there's some things because I'm not, like I'm not a know-all of this subject. I'm I'm also a student. I'm always trying new things. I'm always trying to get better things. And hopefully one day we find the the holy grail of optics. But then it gets better. So I hope it continues to to exceed my expectations. And and as as currently like the Vortex razors, uh, the Gen two and the Gen three are like my go tos. And like I said, the the Leupold, I may buy another one because it was a fantastic optic and uh, everything else, unless they fix certain things, uh, just aren't gonna make it for me. Uh, and there's also a billion LPV LPVOs that I haven't touched or haven't used, uh, like uh, Kales and, and Schmidt and Benders and stuff like that. I just haven't played with. I just, I, once I found some good ones, I started sticking with those. And uh, I also don't have enough rifles to have this many optics anyways. Uh, as you saw, like I had some in my hand. Those are borrowed usually. Um, because I don't own those anymore. I gave them away or I sold them and uh, because I bought different ones because I only have a certain amount of rifles and uh, and I don't buy rifles just for an optic. I buy rifles I'm going to use. So just keep that in mind guys and uh, something else to add in there. And if this, if this helps you out, let me know so that I can continue to make videos to help you guys learn more, especially while we're in this quarantine currently at the time of this film uh, or this video is being filmed. And, uh, and if you need anything, obviously comment below, email me, all that jazz, and check out the website. There's a lot of information on there that a lot of people miss out on, and I hope that actually helps uh, some of you that are willing to go search and, uh, and look through there. So, have a good one. Jackson, feel like a seduction, reluctant to leave. With so much corruption, the rap game, all fame, no rings, all claim to be the next.